All right, this is going to be a video covering the selection tools inside of Photoshop. Let's go ahead and hop right in. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to basically select out these shells and move them into place in this little picture frame here. And on top of that, we'll do a couple additional uh, things using the selection tools. And so let's start with this white sand dollar right here. Now, one of the first tools that we'll look at is the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool is under the fourth set of tools down from the top over here on the left. And what you want to do is click on the icon and hold the mouse down. And that should show you the additional tools inside that tool set. And so the magic wand tool is one of the oldest tools in Photoshop. And if I zoom in a little bit here, and we come over and use it at its regular tolerance, which is set to 32 by default, then we'll notice that when we click inside here, it doesn't do a very good job of selecting all of the sand dollar. And the reason is, is because this sand dollar is made up of lots of different colors. And the tolerance will actually allow it to select more colors. So if we were to increase the tolerance to say 80, and deselect what we have selected right now. And we do that by hitting Command D. <laughs> and so with a tolerance of 80, if we click again, we'll notice that it does a better job, but still not a perfect job. If I zoom in, we can see there's still some areas here that it didn't uh, pick up. And therefore, we're not going to use the magic wand tool. We're going to hit Command D. And instead of using the magic wand tool, we'll go back to that tool set and we'll pick the middle tool, which is the quick selection tool. Now this is a much more effective tool. And if we zoom in again, you'll notice that we have a brush. And what I mean by that is if we hit the left or right bracket keys, we can enlarge our quick select brush, or we can make it smaller. So for example, if I'm selecting someone's body, I might make it bigger. But then when I go to select the fingers, I might make it smaller so as not to accidentally select the webbing in between them. But you'll notice that this tool with one click does a great job. Uh, and again, the reason is, is because this tool is using contrast to tell this shape from this shape. Uh, if we wanted to add to this selection, we could start to move outside the line and notice as soon as I get into the maroon area, it instantly selects the entire image. Um, so if you want to add to it, just click and drag more. Notice now it's selecting the white over here. But if you want to subtract from your selection, just hold down the Option key. You'll notice it's a little hard to see, but if you look at my mouse right now, let's see if we can zoom in a little. It doesn't really seem to help. But if you notice uh, my tool, there's a little plus sign in the middle of it. And if I hold down Option, it turns into a minus sign. Now it's so small, it's hard to see. But you can also look up here in the corner. If we come up to here and you look, you can see it's on the additive mode. There's a little plus sign right there. And as soon as I hold down the Option key, watch what happens. It jumps over to the subtractive mode. So again, even if you can't see the little plus and minus sign, you can see it up there. And again, I'm just holding down the Option key. That's uh, going to be the Alt key on a PC. And there you go. OK, so if I come over here and I hold down Option, and maybe if I make the brush a little smaller, you'll see this. Hold Option and drag in. You can see that now it is subtracting from that selection. And if I go all the way around, it should do a pretty decent and quick job of reselecting. But now notice we've got a little area up here. So I'll hold down Option and just kind of help nudge it back to where it needs to be. And that looks pretty good. As far as properties up here, there's not a whole lot we need to worry about other than the fact that we could adjust our brush size by clicking here. But again, that's going to be time consuming when the bracket keys right below the plus and minus key uh, will do the same thing and it's going to be much faster. So at this point, we have our selection made. And now we have basically uh, a choice to make. We could switch to the Move tool, which again, I'd prefer to hit the V key than go all the way to the toolbar. 
So if you hit the V key, as in Victor, we get the move tool. And notice that it's kind of bouncing in between because we have a selection. And so it keeps defaulting back to the quick select tool because we have that selection live. So if I hold down the V key, I get the move tool. But as soon as I let go, it pops back to the quick selection tool. But basically at this point, we have the choice. We could click on the V key, grab this shell, and move it up to box number A, letter A. <laughs> but in this case, uh, that's what we would call a destructive move. And I'll show you what I mean. If I hit Command D to deselect this shell, now we have a hole where the shell was. The shell has been moved up to here. But most importantly, if we look over on our Layers tab, I'll go ahead and get rid of this background layer because I don't need it. If we look at our Layers tab, we don't have a layer for the shell. It has been added to the background layer, which means that if I take the selection key and I try to grab it and move it, I can't. Uh, now, in this case, uh, so someone brought up that the shadow of this S is over here on the left-hand side. But kind of where I've put this shell, notice we have these little drop shadows underneath. I accidentally put the shadow on the right hand side. Now because I did this destructively and I put it on the same layer as the background, I can't go through and change that now. Uh, because again, as you see, if I try to move it, it's going to move the entire layer because the shell is not on its own layer. So for me, I would much prefer to put that shell on its own layer so that for any reason, if I need to make any changes to the shell or even the background behind it, I still have that flexibility. Again, it's that term of non-destructive. So I'm going to hit Command Z and I'm going to go back to where that shell was right here. And instead of putting it on its own layer, I'm going to copy it and paste it onto its own layer, which is done by just simply having the shell selected, hitting Command C to copy that shell. That loads it into our clip bar, uh, clipboard. And then I'm going to hit Command V, and that will paste it onto its own layer. If I turn off the other layers, you can see there it is. And now I can click on that layer, hit the V key. Notice that now with it not selected, when I hit the V key, it doesn't want to bounce back and forth between the quick selection tool. So now I can drag it up there. And if I realize the shadow is on the wrong side, I can just nudge it over here to leave the shadow on that side. So again, it's that concept of working non-destructively. Now, if you finish this project and you decide that you don't need to have individual layers for all these shells, it's very easy to flatten the entire image down into one layer. But at this point, I can think of a million reasons why I would benefit from having these shells on their own layer and very few reasons to benefit from having this all flattened down. The only real benefit is less layers to look at. But again, as a Photoshop artist, I see that as a good thing. So let's go to the next one. The next one is going to be our conch shell down here, or excuse me, our coral. And if I zoom in, I always zoom in when I select. Uh, now I need to come over here and make sure to reselect my background because that's the layer this is on. And generally speaking, after adjusting the sand dollar, you will generally have that layer still selected. So make sure to go back and click on your background layer. And this time we're going to use the object selection tool. If I go back to the magic wand tool or the quick select, I'll also find the object selection tool. Again, it's the fourth tool down. It's an assisted selection tool. And you notice that if I just uh, put it over the image, it instantly tries to figure out what I might want it to select. If I put it over here, if I put it up there, and that's OK. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to give it a little bit of help, and I'm going to come right over here, just click and drag a box out. Now again, I just clicked up in the corner, held down the mouse, and dragged it diagonally down. When I let go, we're going to see it makes a selection. And again, if I hover over it, it will kind of give me that pink outline, but I'm not really interested in that at the moment. Now, on top of this, it's a good idea to zoom in. 
and really examine your selection. As we can see here, it's missed a couple pixels. And because those pixels are sort of light enough that it confused them with the white background, we can just see that it's not a perfect selection. If we wanted to expand the selection to include those pixels, we could go up to Select, Modify, Expand. And if I click that, I could then tell it to expand that selection by one pixel. And that might add in some of those mixing, missing pixels, but it also might add in some of the white background. So again, the choice to do that is yours. In this case, let's go ahead and do it just so you can see what happens. So you can now see that we've expanded the selection by one pixel. And sure enough, it's picking up all those missing pixels, but it's also picking up a lot of these white background pixels. Again, this is the price you pay for using an automated selection tool. So if I move this now, it's going to look like it has a slight white outline around it because the background is being selected. But the object selection tool is a really easy tool to use. You can modify your selection after making it. You can feather it. You can put a stroke around it. You can even contract it if you want. Um, and so now that we have that selected, let's do the same process. I'm going to zoom out by hitting Command minus. Again, with the background selected and coral selected, we're going to hit Command C to copy it, Command V to paste it on its own layer, and then I'm going to hit the V key to grab that piece of coral and drag it up to box B. And again, making sure to leave that shadow on the left hand side. Now, notice that I'm kind of moving it around up here. I don't particularly like to move in small amounts using this tool. What I'd rather do is use the arrow keys. Notice that if I zoom in here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Command D to deselect this, hit the V key. So if I switch to the Move tool, I can then use the arrow keys to move in small increments, as you can see here. If I hold down the Shift key, it's going to move in 10 pixel increments, so that'll make it jump a little bit more. But I'd much prefer to do this than to use the move tool and have to sit there kind of squeezing the mouse and trying to get it to move one or two pixels at a time. And also, you can notice we did get a little bit of a white outline from expanding that selection. All right, moving on. Now at this point, it's also, since we're going to have at least one, two, three, four, five, six separate layers plus our background, we need to stay organized. So what we're going to do right now is take a second and label these layers. So I'll go to layer number one and press the layer button. I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in sand dollar. Go to layer number two, double click, type in coral. All right. Okay, let's move on to our next one. Now this one is going to be this plate of snails right here. And for this one, we're going to use a marquee tool in order to make this selection. And the marquee tools are the second tools down. Right now you're seeing the re rectangular marquee tool. If I hold the mouse down, I can go down to the elliptical marquee tool. Now. If I start down here and I click and drag diagonally upwards, you'll notice that the marquee kind of moves into the center of the plate. If you look at the lower left side, you can see it's not where it was when I started. So in order to use this tool, what I need to do is actually, when I get to about here, I'm going to put my hand on the space bar and I can drag that selection back down. And now I can let go of the space bar while still holding the mouse down, and I can continue to finish off that selection. And there we go. I'm just kind of moving a little up. Now notice that, again, the selection is not quite perfect in the lower left. So I'll hold down the space bar. I'll nudge it back a little bit, let go, all while holding the mouse down. And then right about here, we have a pretty nice looking selection. So all you really need to know about the marquee tool, or one of the things you'd need to know, is that as you drag, you can move the selection that you are making by holding down the spacebar. 
Uh, you also have the ability to feather the selection if you want. That would just soften the edges. It's a good idea to keep anti-aliasing checked. That's going to help make a smoother selection around your edges. All right, so just like we've done before, we're going to click on the background layer. We're going to zoom out a little bit by hitting Command minus. And we are going to hit Command C to copy, Command V to paste the plate on its own new layer. We'll go ahead and title that layer, call it Snail. And then we'll hit the V key and drag that right on up to box number C, letter C. Okay, so now let's move on to the muscle. Again, I'm gonna zoom in. I always zoom in because if you don't zoom in, you're not gonna make a good selection. You just can't. So right now I'm zoomed in, zoomed into about 500%. Basically you wanna zoom in as much as you can. And I do that by hitting Command Plus. So with this, we are going to use the lasso tool. If I go down to the second, excuse me, the third set of tools down, you'll see that if I hold the mouse, I have the lasso tool and I have the polygonal lasso tool. I also have the magnetic lasso tool, but we're not gonna use that one right now. We're just gonna use the lasso tool and the polygon lasso tool. And all you need to know about this tool is essentially the lasso is a freehand tool, meaning that if I wanna sit here and very carefully trace this out by hand, the lasso tool is a tool that does that. Now what's important to know about the lasso tool is that if I hit this sort of straight line right here at the bottom, I can hold down option, let go of my mouse, and you'll notice that the tool changes. Now I have the, po the polygon lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. Uh, and at this point, I'm holding down option, I've let go of the mouse, and I can just move the mouse without pressing any buttons to advance the polygon lasso tool. When I wanna switch back to the regular lasso tool, I click on the mouse and you can see now the icon has changed back to the regular lasso and I'm gonna let go of the option key and now I can continue to trace by hand, which again is a little time consuming and not terribly accurate, but that's what the tool does. And so once I get to the end, I will simply let go and it makes a selection. Now, in this situation, we have an issue. And that is the fact that the box that it's gonna go into is vertical and the selection is horizontal. So the first thing I wanna do is select my background layer to make sure that I have the layer that the muscle is on hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste, which again is gonna put a version right on top of itself. So at this point, I need to rotate this and there's two main ways you can do this. With this layer selected, I could go up to Edit, Transform, and I could go down to where it says Rotate Clockwise 90 Degrees. If I click that, sure enough, it rotates it and then I can use the Move tool to move it into place. If you need to sort of move through your screen, you can hit the space bar and that allows you to move your project around. So I could put it right there and that's fine and it does work, but it's not the way I would do it. All right, the way I would do it, which I believe is much faster, is by just simply hitting Command T. That gives me the free transform tool. In fact, let's go back a step to when it was horizontal. If I now hit Command T to select it and enable the free transform tool, all I have to do is put my mouse just outside one of the corners. And if I hold Shift, it's gonna constrain the rotation to 15 degree amounts, which makes it very easy to get it right to 90 degrees. I can then drag it up. Again, hold the space bar, drag it up, hold the space bar, put it right into place, and hit return. To me, that is much faster than going all the way up to edit and down to transform and <laughs> where there it is right there. 
So again, we just hit Command T, that gave us the free transform tool. We held down Shift, rotated the muscle, and dragged it into place. Now you're gonna have to hit Return to disable the free transform tool. Again, because once you enable the free transform tool, you're not gonna be able to do anything else. So as long as you have this bounding box, you can either hit the return key to make it go away, or you can hit this checkbox up here. Notice that does the same thing. All right, we'll come over it, we'll title this muscle, and we'll move on to our last selection tool, which is the magnetic lasso tool. So the magnetic lasso tool is pretty interesting and pretty unique. It's kind of like an, a lasso tool that can also see contrast. So to use this tool, essentially find a spot on the Nautilus here, we'll call this a shell, and just click. And once you click, you don't have to hold down the button on the mouse. You can simply move the mouse. Now what's happening is the mouse is seeing my movement and it's seeing the contrast of that edge. And so it's essentially helping me. <laughs> it's kind of like the lasso tool with a little bit of computer learning built in. Contrast detection is probably a better way to describe it. And if I just slowly go around here, I'm gonna get a pretty decent selection. And again, the nice thing is you actually don't have to hold down the button. I'm just moving the mouse right now and it's automatically creating that line. And once I get back to the where I started, I can just click one more time. That makes a selection. And just like always, make sure that you're on the background layer. Once you have a selection, you can hit Command C, Command V. That's gonna copy it and paste it on a new layer. We'll double click and title it, call it Shell. And we will hit the V key and drag it up to box E. All right, so now we have these screws and we're gonna put these in each corner of our frame. So I'll go back to the background layer, I'll zoom in, and we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool, which is the second tool down. You're gonna to need to hold down the button and you will see the elliptical marquee tool. It's the same tool we used for the snails, but this time we're gonna put it right in the middle of the screw. And if you click and drag just a little bit, and I'm talking very little bit, and then hold down the Option key, you'll notice that now it is selecting from the center. And if you want it to make a perfect circle, you can also hold down the Shift key. And now we're getting a perfect circle. So to be clear, I have my finger on the Shift key, the Option key, and I have the mouse clicked as I drag. And right about there, it's gonna work just fine. So once you have that selected, Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And what we'll do is we'll then switch to the selection tool, which is the V key. We'll drag this up into place. And we'll notice that it's too big. And since it is too big, we need to size it down. The easiest way to do that is by just hitting Command T to get the free transform tool. I put my mouse in the upper corner of this bounding box and shrink it down to right about there. Okay, and hit return, and there we go. Now, if you come over here and see that we have layer number one, we're gonna title this screw. And rather than reselecting this three more times, I'm just gonna duplicate this one right here. So to duplicate a layer, we could copy and paste it, Command C, Command V, but it's even faster to just hit Command J. Command J will copy any selected layer. And so we can see that the second screw, screw copy, is now sitting right on top of the one we copied. So I'm just gonna click and drag it right up to this corner. But since it's kind of facing the exact same direction, it kind of looks like it's been copied and pasted. So I'm just gonna hit Command T and rotate it a little bit. 
just so it doesn't look exactly like this one. And then I'll hit return. And then I'll go back to the copy, select it, hit command J to duplicate it. And I'll drag it over here. And again, same thing, command T, rotate it a little bit, hit the return key. And then we'll get the last one. I'll make sure we have screw copy two selected. Hit command J to duplicate it. Drag it down here. Then hit command T and rotate it a little bit. And it is worth mentioning that if, if you want to duplicate a layer, you could also select the layer, right click on it, and you would see the option to duplicate right there. But again, it's too time consuming. I'd much rather just hit Command J and move on. All right, so at this point we're done with all of the selection tools, but I wanna show you a couple other cool things you can do with the marquee tool. Because it's not always about selecting, sometimes it's about deleting. You know, we, I'm gonna show you how to use it in a subtractive manner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a new photo of this beach here. Uh, let's go ahead and for just for the sake of clarity, I'll turn off the layers on top of it. We'll go ahead and turn off the uh, coral, the, sh the shell, and the mussel. Okay, so now we see there's a photo of a beach here, but it's got frame that overlaps it. It's even got some shadow that we could replace because that's going to end up going away when we cover the image. So over here, I have an image of, let's see here, if I go to my downloads, and right there, we've got a new beach image. So let's drag that right on top of our Photoshop image. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's very big and that it has free transform controls live on it. And so if I drag it over here, I'm gonna just more or less get it so that the left side, the top and the bottom are correct and let the right side overlap like that. Okay, and there we go. All right, so at this point, you will see that we have the image pretty much in place and we've got some issues. Um, now the first thing you need to think about is if you drag an image into a document, that image is gonna come in as a smart image. And you can tell because it's got this little icon in the lower right corner of your thumbnail here. And that denotes that it's a smart image. And what that means is that this is not actually the image. This is an instance of that image. The actual image is now opened up into its own document. Well, in order to see the document, all you have to do is double click on it. There we go. Now we can see the document that that image actually lives in. And that's a way of like protecting the image so that you're not actually working with the original version. The original version is again in its own document. But we don't really want that right now because as soon as I come over here and try to delete an area of this image, I'll show you. I'm gonna grab the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee. I'm gonna come over and I am going to lower the opacity on this beach image by selecting the image and going up to opacity. I'll drop it down to about 30%. And now I can see through it so I can see the frame underneath. So if I come over here and I select everything to the right of this edge, when I try to delete it, I'm gonna get a warning that says, could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. Okay. So I need to stop this from being a smart object. And that's very easy to do. All you have to do is right click on it and go to rasterize layer. By doing that, notice that the little smart object icon goes away. And now if I hit the M key for the marquee tool, I can come up here and select all these pixels that I don't want, the ones that are on the frame and beyond, and just simply hit delete. Because since I made the selection, when I hit delete, it only deleted what was inside the selection. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect that. 
Now we'll come over here and I'm going to just select the frame. At least this vertical part of it. And I'm going to hit delete. Command D to uh, deselect. Now I'll select the horizontal portion of the frame. And again, hit delete. Now if I turn the opacity back to 100% for that layer, you can see that we now have made it fit inside those boxes. And I did have a student that mentioned the fact that in the process of doing this, we lost the shadow. Notice how there's a shadow here and there and there and there. If you wanted to draw that back in, you could also use the marquee tool to help you. And I'll do this quickly just to show you, but it's a really cool technique. I'm going to go over to the brush tool or just hit the B key. Now I have a brush tool you can see right there. And I'm going to go up and set it to zero hardness. Okay, I clicked on this little uh, icon right here that opens up the brush tool settings. And I'm going to set the hardness to zero. That means it's going to have a very soft edge, not unlike the edges of those shadows. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to grab the marquee tool and I am going to put a marquee just on the inside of the, the image. And then I'm going to hit the B key to get that brush. Now again, the brush, basically what the marquee is going to do is it's going to constrain any marks that I make to the inside of this box. Meaning that if I draw over here, nothing happens. If I click and drag, nothing happens. But if I click and drag inside this box, you can see that it's only allowing me to draw inside the box. And what that will do is keep the shadow from ending up on the frame. So all I'm going to do is this, drag out this little box by hitting the M key and just dragging kind of, let's see if I deselect, I'm just going to drag diagonally from the upper left to the lower right. Then I'm going to hit the B key and I'm going to hit the bracket, the right bracket, just to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to kind of center it. So half of it is in the marquee and half of it is not. And I'm just going to click at the top. I've clicked once. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom, right about the same spot. I'm going to hold down shift. And by holding down shift, it's going to connect these two click points. Now I'm going to click again. And you see that we get a straight line. Okay. Now I'm going to undo that because the one thing that I would want to do here is I would want to put this on its own layer so that I could then go in and lower the opacity and, and have a little control over that shadow. So I'm going to hit this button down here in the lower right hand corner that looks like a little plus sign in a box. And that's going to add a new layer. So now I have this new layer, layer one, on top of the sh Shutterstock image. I'm going to go ahead and double click and call this Shadows. Now it's important that this is on top because if it's underneath we won't see these shadows. And I'll do this one more time. Click right here and then I'm going to hold down the shift key. Come right down here. Again, half my brush is in the marquee, half of it is out and click. And that gives me that straight line. Now I'll go ahead and hit Command D to deselect. I'll grab the marquee tool again by hitting the M key and I'll repeat the process down here. Now I'll hit the B key and again I'm going to put it so that the brush is sort of halfway in and halfway out. I'm going to put it right above the marquee. I'm going to click once, hold down shift, come down to the bottom, click again and get that nice shadow. Hit command D to deselect and again I'm making sure that I'm on the shadows layer so I don't accidentally write on one of these other layers. And then we'll add one last shadow in over here by Again, just drawing a marquee. And the marquee, again, is constraining my brush to inside the box. So I click once at the top. I drag the mouse to the bottom. I hold down Shift. And I click. And there's our shadow. Hit Command D to deselect. Now, again, the reason that I wanted this on its own layer was so that I could then select the shadows and go up to Opacity. And I could start to desaturate them 
until they look similar to the existing ones we have. I could even add a blend mode if I wanted to, something like multiply or maybe overlay. Overlay looks pretty nice. But in this case, I don't really think I need to. I can leave it on normal and just drop the opacity until I feel like we have a, a pretty similar looking shadow. For me, that's gonna be probably about 40%. All right, very last thing we're gonna do, well, not the very last, one of the last things we're gonna do is we are gonna replace this image right here. Uh, in this case, I have an image already picked out. All right, so picture of Pee Wee Herman. That's gonna replace what we have in that box. So the way that I'm gonna do this is by dragging the image over into my, into my project. And again, it is now much bigger than it needs to be. So with the controls, I'll shrink it down to roughly the size of that frame. And so you'll notice that if I, if I try to fit it, it's not gonna work because the aspect ratio of the image doesn't match the frame, right? It's hanging over. So if I wanted to kind of put him in the middle there, I'm gonna to have to trim off these edges. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the return key to get rid of the uh, free transform controls. Okay, so we have this image, but if I grab the image and I lower its opacity, I can see that we need to trim off the edges of it. Also, it's a smart object. So let's start by right clicking on it and choosing rasterize layer. And now with the opacity turned down so I can see the frame underneath it, I'm going to hit the M key and get the rectangular marquee tool. And what I'm gonna do is with this layer selected, the, the Pee Wee Herman layer, I'm gonna click and basically just match the frame. Now, the marquee tool is marking where the frame is and it's on top of the Pee Wee Herman layer. So at this point, if I copy and paste, it's only gonna copy what's inside that frame. So if I hit Command C and then Command V, you'll notice that it just duplicated the Pee Wee Herman image, but it only duplicated what was inside the marquee. Now we still have a little overlap, but that's from the original Pee Wee Herman image. So all I have to do is turn that layer off. And now we have, in fact, I could delete it as well. I could drag it down to the trash. And now we have uh, an image that fits inside of the frame. Now again, we could do the same thing with the shadows and all that, but I'm not gonna uh, force you to do that. All right, so in the process of uh, replacing our, our coral, our nautilus, and our muscle, we lost our shadows. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to quickly replace those shadows. Okay, so we lost and regained our shadows in the image, but we also lost our shadows under the shells. Now we're going to add those shadows back, but we're going to use a different technique. And so if I go over to my snail, excuse me, if I go to my shell, rather than grabbing a brush tool and painting in a drop shadow, we're going to use what's called a layer style. So I'm gonna navigate over to the bottom of my layers tab to a button that says FX. If I click on that and I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that gives me a bunch of additional layer styles that I can apply to my image. And the one I wanna use this time is called Drop Shadow. If I click on that, you'll see it automatically adds a drop shadow to the shell that looks pretty good and if we take a look at the settings here in the drop shadow window, we'll see that we have control over the opacity, the distance, the spread and the size and the angle of the light. So overall with a opacity of 65, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty similar to this one. And the distance and spread and size all look pretty good. You can try to drag these down and sort of see what they do changes the distance there. But it kind of you can kind of tell that the shadow is pointed straight down because as I increase the distance it goes straight down. 
And in the rest of the images, the shadow is kind of facing to the left and maybe a little bit down. So in order to tweak that, I can just grab this angle slider and I'm going to kind of take it over to the right a little bit. And there you go. Now it's kind of going down and to the right. And it maybe looks a little bit too dark in comparison to these ones. So I could go ahead and drop that opacity back even more. Maybe down to about, eh, about 30, 35, somewhere in between there. And you'll notice now we have a real light drop shadow and a pretty good one there. Our drop shadow is spreading out a little bit more. Notice how this one has almost a hard edge to it. So if I adjust the spread down a little bit, you'll see that that kind of cuts down. I could also adjust the size. And you see that that kind of hardens and softens that feather. So if I brought the size down a little bit and then maybe even pulled the distance back a touch, now I can get a very similar drop shadow to what we're seeing over here. And this is the coolest part about this. So anyways, we ended up with an opacity of 31, a distance of 17, a spread of zero, and a size of nine. And what I like about layer styles and drop shadows is that I don't have to do this for each one of these. I can now come over to the shell layer and it says effects and drop shadows. One of the coolest things about layer effects is that I can turn them off so they're editable. I can add more and, and turn off some of them, leave some of them on by just clicking those uh, eyeballs. But I can also right click and choose copy layer style. And if I copy it, then I can go over to the coral and I can right click and choose paste layer style. And I can go over to the muscle and do the same. Right click, paste layer style. So basically you just learn two different ways to create shadows. One is by using a black brush that's set to soft and adjusting the opacity. And the other one is using the built-in drop shadow tools inside of Photoshop. All right, now the last thing we need to do is put this on its own document and give it a little bit of color correction. And at the moment, we've got lots of layers. And rather than working with all these layers, I wanna work with a flattened version of this image but I don't want to lose all of these layers in case I need to change something later. And so rather than flattening and losing these layers, I wanna flatten it and keep those layers. And the way that we do that is by holding down Shift, Option, Command, E. That basically creates a flattened version of this entire image, but it doesn't take away our access to the original layers. So notice where it says layer one right here. I'm gonna drag that up to the top. That is a flattened version of this entire document. Notice that if I turn off any of the layers underneath it, we don't see any change because this is a flattened version. If I turn off the flattened version, then you can see that there's been some changes underneath. So the point is, is that I now have a flattened version that I can work with, but if I turn it off, I can have access back to all the original layers, and I can hit Shift Command Option E as many times as I want uh, after I make any necessary changes. So in this case, I'm pretty much done with all these layers, so I'm not gonna worry about them anymore. I'm gonna turn on the eyeball for the flattened layer, and this is what we're gonna do to finish this up. We're gonna hit the M key for the Marquee tool. We are going to select the frame and a little bit of a border around the edge of it. Right about there looks good. And we're going to copy it by hitting Command C. Now that copies it to our virtual clipboard. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go File, New. And when I click that, the first thing you'll notice is the first option says Clipboard and it actually matches the exact size of the selection I just made. So if you ever wanna copy just part of an image to a new document, you can simply select it, Command-C to copy, and then go File, New, 
and choose clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and hit create now and that's going to create an image that is the size of that selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the selection that I made in the other document. So I'll just simply hit command V. All right, now we have essentially just the work we've done. We've trimmed off all the stuff we didn't need. And now that we have this flattened on one layer, we're going to add a color corrector to it to kind of uh, help blend in these new images that we added. They're a little bit too sharp and a little bit too high, uh, high contrast. They just really don't match the rest of the image. So in order to try to bind all these images together with some similar colors, we're going to go ahead and go down to our adjustment layers which again is the circle with the half black, half white filling. And we're going to go down to where it says color lookup. So lookups or lookup tables are simply filters. Okay, like think of like an Instagram filter. So if I click that, it loads in my 3D LUTs up here in the properties. And where it says load 3D LUT, I'm going to hit the drop down next to it. And I'm going to come down and check out some of these photo filters like Fuji or Kodak because they're going to do a lot to kind of adjust the uh, exposure. And again, let's apply one and you can see what I'm talking about. I'll go down to this Kodak 25218 Kodak, basically the bottom one. And if I click on it, you'll see that it desaturates the image a little bit kind of increases the uh, exposure. If I hit the eyeball next to the adjustment layer, I can turn it on and turn it off. See if I like it. If I don't, I can always go back up to the drop down and pick a different one. That one might be a little bit too washed out, but it's doing a good job. It's doing what I want it to do. It's blending these images together a little bit better. We could, we could of course go further, but let's see. That one's adding in a little purple. I'll go up and check out the Fuji. That's a little too heavy handed. Okay, I like this Fuji F125 Kodak 2395. Again, you can pick any one you like. So with that on there, I'm going to go ahead and be done. So I'll go File, Save. That's going to save my existing document. Save this as chapter three assignment. And on top of that, and I'm going to save it as a PSD, not as a TIFF. And then on top of that, I'm going to go file, export, export as. And I'll make sure it's set to JPEG, bump it up to seven quality, and choose export. And that will allow me to export a version that I can share and turn in through Canvas. And that's going to do it, guys. Hope that helped.